Today we're going to talk about an old method for collecting data mined wake exception and other wake scan data that for the longest time was completely dead and unusable but is once again back in business. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Downworth Astronomy. Today we're going to talk about a method for collecting data mined wake exceptions that some of you may already be aware of, but for people who've joined the game in the last, let's say, two years, might not have heard of. I should say that I actually have done a video on this before, but it's three years ago, so I thought it was due for an update. First, I just want to give you a quick overview of the history of this, then we're going to dive into the method itself, and then towards the end we're going to talk about the ship choices and equipment you're going to need. So this method revolves around scanning wakes in distribution centers and this has been around since forever but it requires a very specific system state and some changes that happened some years ago meant that that state just was so rare that it was basically never going to occur it was not in the game meaning that these distribution centers just stopped spawning without the distribution centers people were looking to other methods that could for instance be Jameson's crashed Cobra, and then just cross-trade data from there. However, due to some of the changes that Frontiers made over the last year, this method is once again viable. So let's talk about the method itself. We're going to talk about equipment later, but you will need a wake scanner, obviously. The next thing you need to do is you need to find a system that has the system state famine. What you can do here is to go over to the galaxy map, select state here from the, um, from the dropdown, and then basically just deselect everything, like so, and then just select famine, Make sure you have no population filters on. Scroll out a bit and just begin looking around the system. You can also search this up on a place like Inara, EDDB. Just keep in mind that because factions can now be in multiple states at the same time, the system might not might show up on EDDB as being a famine system, but it may not be. So I highly recommend that you do check the system, as you can see the one I'm in here, that it is in fact in the state of famine. And remember, these swap around. So just because we're in the system today, it doesn't mean that it's in famine tomorrow. So you have to move around, find a new system uh, in order to, uh, to make this work. Once you've made your way to the system, we're going to jump over here to the navigation panel and we're going to be looking for distribution sensors. Scroll down the list here, here we go. There are actually three of them around Planet 3. So um, let's head out in that direction. Once we arrive, you can see here you will be greeted by three Type 9s, all parked close to a whole lot of nav beacons. These Type 9s are delivering food to the system because obviously it's in short supply. Now, smaller ships will come in, as you can see we have here. We have some haulers coming in. Once they picked up supplies, they will leave. And that's when we're going to go ahead and we're going to scan their wakes when they high wake out of the system. You can see we also have a sidewinder up here, so it's relatively small ships and they spawn quite frequently, often four at a time. There we go. First one jumped out, target it, scan it with the wake scanner, and hope for the best. In this case, I got atypical disruptive wake echoes, so not what we were looking for, but we can just scan the next one, and more atypical disruptive wake echoes. Go to your contacts, see if there are more wakes. We have another wake here, nothing in that one. Let's try the last one and more disruptive wake echoes. So now all we have to do is just go back to the distribution center and wait for the next four ships to spawn, and we can do the whole thing over again. They spawn with about a minute in between or something, so it's it's fairly rapid. Now, in terms of how fast you can collect it, it's about the same as cross-trading from Jameson's crash site. So it's not that it's a lot faster and there's a lot more RNG in this. You can have unlucky runs where you get absolutely nothing for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then you can have other times like the screenshot I took here earlier today where I got two data mine wake exceptions after each other. So there is a bit more RNG, but the benefit is you can do it in the bubble. You don't have to fly all the way out to a Jameson's crash site. And it's nice to have a different gameplay loop and have an alternative to going out there and just flying back and forth and cross trading all the time. But you can see here while we've been talking, 
The next set of ships has already arrived. They're going to pick up materials. They're going to fly out and we're going to scan their wakes. And we're just going to keep doing this. Now, while you're waiting for more ships to spawn, another thing you can do is actually just target the type nines and scan them. This gives you a chance to get some various shield data. So there's a bit more data in it for you here if you want to. Of course, you can only scan them once, but what you can do if you want to is you can relock. Um, so if you're interested in scanning type nines for shield data, you can do that as well by just scan the three ships, log out to the main menu, log back in, and you can scan the ships again. So let's quickly talk about ship equipment and ship choices. It's not overly complicated, but in general, there are two schools of thoughts in how you do this. Basically, what you will need, of course, is a frameshift wake scanner. The higher rate it is, the longer range it has, which is nice, but it also consumes quite a bit of power. You can run it unengineered, then it has a A rate that has a 4 kilometer range and a 10 a second scan time. But as you can see in this one here, I have engineered mine. It does mean I lose about 25% of my range down to 3 kilometers, but it reduces my scan time down to 2 seconds. Measure I've gone for here is to have a fast ship. This is why you can see I'm in the Imperial Courier. This is a very fast ship. This one boosts over 800 meters a second, meaning I can move between the different wakes very quickly, and I only take 2 seconds to scan. Other school of thought is to engineer them with long range. This gives you, I think it's 120% range. So I think you get over eight kilometer range on these if you do that instead. This will of course means you can now scan pretty much without moving. So you just sit still at the center of the distribution center and just scan all the, uh, all the wakes as they appear. But your scan time will be, um, will be 10 seconds. So it is a bit longer. I personally prefer the small nimble fast ship and then move around since I think it's more fun to have a chance to take out your small nipple fast racing ships but going long range is definitely also an option it's really just up to you and one final thing before we end if you found this video useful go down and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and until next time i will see you guys in space